Hello and welcome to the first session of Philosophical Intervention in the Silence of the Future. Instructors are Anne-Francois Schmidt, Tony Yannick, and Joven Neal. Description. This seminar is concerned with redefining the relationship between the future and philosophy. We study how the future is not only a time supposed to occupy, occur after the past and the present, but above all a modality capable of intervening in the present. If we do not know the future in its forthcoming developments, we know immediate, intimately that this unknown will introduce changes in our present. Philosophical invention is implicitly motivated by the call of the future. But this is an imagined future and rather innovative with snatches and sketches of images, times and places. A general idea that motivates invention. These fragments of the future, partly unknown and never completely given, are what are, allows a philosophy to inhabit space and time and to find its individuation among other philosophies. The future that often gives rise to apocalyptic or science fiction narratives is one already determined and received from the outside. However, this kind of future that stimulates uh, stimulates philosophy is not engaged with existing narratives but with the diversity of modes of invention of philosophy itself and of the imagination of fiction peculiar to them. Philosophical invention cannot be separated from the future but this is a future that resists narration and which from this point of view contains a driving charge of silence. The seminar is both a review of existing literature regarding the connections between philosophy and the future and a forum for generating new associations between the two realms. Throughout the seminar, students will work individually and collaboratively to work on practical exercises concerning the following. Considering the future does not depend on any discipline and it can be apprehended by each, we propose exercises of philosophical invention, of which we give elements of methods from future developed by the students according to the discipline of origin and or their activity. The instructors have previously worked with each other to arrive at the concepts presented in this seminar. Anne-Francois Schmidt and Lou have developed philosophical means for new solidarities between art and philosophy. Schmidt and Tony Yannick have developed a dispersive negation in contemporary integrative objects, those that do not support synthesis to invent by abduction new links between those objects and philosophies. Joven Neon works on Schmidt's principal concept in philosophy of sciences and is translating her latest book, Philosophical Scripts. These four instructors will work together according to their skills in order to respond and deepen the problems proposed by the students. Thank you. Um, now we'll go to this, the, the bio. Alphonsoir Schmidt, philosopher among the scientists, recently philosopher among artists, point care specialist and editor of Russell and Cordra has taught Philosophy and Epistemology at the University of Paris, Quest Notaire, Mathematical Logic at the University of Geneva. Its problem is how to avoid exclusions, exclusions of scientific methods emerging in science in the light of what it sees in laboratories and research centers, exclusions of philosophies in the name of supremacy of one of them. I will now hand the mic to Anne Francois. There is a small button uh, that looks like a microphone up, up, up there. It's, it's. You're muted. Can you unmute Anne Francois? No, she has to unmute herself. Okay. Uh, the unmute unmute button is up there, Anne Francois. 
it's, it's like this small uh, you just unmuted yourself and and remute yeah now you're here yeah we can good? hear you yes yes very good. Uh, yes like hello it. i am very very happy to to be with you all excuse me i am i have not uh, uh, fluent english i never learn english at school but i love english i i edit russell but in french and uh, and and uh, uh, my my i i use english all the day but it is difficult to to hear i i will uh, ask you the the pardon so but in philosophy i am a person who search a new style i think there are some relationship between the techniques in philosophy and the style in philosophy and i i am creating a style with the idea of a generic space for the philosophy for the multiplicity of philosophy so it's it's a part of my my work the second part is the the participation to to work of scientists and with as a scientist i create the generic epistemology to have some uh, possibility to understand the interdisciplinary regime of science the on the current science and the, the new object of science and the third part of my my work is to collaborate with artists too with uh, benoit mer with uh, john gerhardt with robin mackey with alice lucy recab and to have some some possibility to to think no the philosophy of art where philosophy is universal but art philosophy science philosophy as operators on philosophy and i am very happy to collaborate with tony and with joy van thank you um messi and from sauce is could everybody um if you guys can hear me could all of you tell us a little a bit about your background um what what do you do like what are your theoretical interests um, yes. how are you coming here um what motivates you yes yes etc cetera, etc cetera. um i i'm i'm joven i'm a phd student at emory and i'm working on on standard philosophy um yeah um does anyone want does anyone of you want to go what is inside I think it is best to start uh, from left to right or from right to left. <laughs> but, uh, either I start with Andrea or I start with Mike. <laughs> Since Andrea is already here and we can see the video, I'll take Andrea. So the next time it will be Mike, Michael, uh, Lenka, and Ed, Ed, and so on. So I'll switch to Andrea. Hello everyone. Uh, yes, I'm Andrea, and I'm graduating in philosophy. And well, um, I, I'm here especially because, um, well, uh, I'm really interested in uh, non-philosophy, especially non-philosophy, and also in uh, non-Euclidean geometry. And I saw that uh, that Anne Francois is um, is a studious of uh, Henri Poincaré. Yes. And, I recently started studying a new, new, new non uh, Euclidean geometry, and also I'm really um, I'm I'm starting I'm starting studying uh, regarding um, algorithmic governance and uh, AI and uh, their aspects, its aspects uh, in um, in politics uh, and in aesthetics. 
Um, mm. Well, th that's all I can say for now. I'm I'm a, I'm, a, and I'm and I'm I'm about to start a master degree in cultural studies in uh, at yeah, Goldie, and that's all. <laughs> Very good, very good, very interesting. Uh, Bettina? Mm. <clears throat> uh, but, Bettina, you just muted yourself. Yeah. Voila. No, no you yeah. Wait. So, The, the the button if it's not red then you are unmuted okay so probably now it's unmuted. yes now we can hear you okay um so my name is bettina i'm a german visual artist but the last seven years i've been living in malta i travel quite a lot um and um so i would say i'm, I'm more nomadic not really based anywhere i've been working mostly in my visual arts um in, in my in my own artistic work with uh, storytelling with uh, the realm of philosophy uh, well, philosophical thinking but more like in mythology and how mythology i'm trying to think about how mythology translates into the current time and um so i go back to prehistoric pasts and i'm really fascinated how to relate it to a present time but also i'm looking at um techniques of um, fortune telling, of um, trying to predict the future. And that is why, so I, I did extensive research on palm reading and um, the um, coffee cup reading in, um, in Istanbul. The last six months I spent with a residency in, in Istanbul and I was going to all these um, Turkish coffee cup fortune tellers. <clears throat> so this is a very, very, <clears throat> sorry, pra pra practical, pragmatical approach to it. And I thought I would, like to hear some philosophical thoughts about what I'm trying to do in a, in a visual art world. Um, on the other hand, I'm also in Malta, I started to curate exhibitions, meaning that I um, founded an NGO five years ago and I organized pop up exhibitions in the public space, I'm trying to bring artists into the public space to react to, um, to have a direct reaction to what is going on in politics and society and really have a, um, a create a dialogue and an exchange. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of working both as a visual artist and as a curator, but I, yeah, we can talk more, but that's about it for now. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Christy? Hi, am I, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, oh, it's weird to see myself big on the screen. Um, so I'm Christy. I just graduated um, undergrad in the US and I um, sort of like randomly met Jason who runs the new center in Seattle. Um, and I knew I wanted to do more academics and I didn't really know what. So he was like, oh, come, come do this. I was like, okay. Um, and I, uh, I studied history and politics um, in undergrad. And this was interesting to me because um, I've done a little bit of work with temporality. Um, and also I like, am really interested in how history manifests um, in public spaces um, and how like communal memory works. And so I thought it would be interesting to think also about um, sort of like this, how the future also intervenes um, in spaces as well as the past and the sort of the juxtaposition, but also how those two things work together. Um, and I, I basically just want to do, read more theory. <laughs> yeah, and I'm living in Spain right now. I'm teaching English in Spain right now. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. David? Am I on? We can see you. Oh, great. Okay. Um, hey, I'm David. I uh, live in Los Angeles. I am uh, unaffiliated with any um, uh, organization other than the News Center. Um, but earlier in, um, in January, actually, I ended up being a teaching assistant for the first course in a computational law and blockchain at uh, MIT. So I uh, was previously working with the Economic Space Agency. And I've been in the blockchain space. I uh, moderate a big group on uh, on Telegram called uh, Ethereum Trader, 
And so I've been watching this process of people attempting to hyperstition a future that didn't quite go. So I've I've always been interested in in these um, in in the uh, intersection of the present and future and uh, how these things work. I've also been reading. Um, I'm trying to remember Alexander Wentz. Um, what is it? A uh, uh, quantum mind and social science. And I see a. Uh, 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 the um, Barad uh, work is mentioned some somewhat in, in this, so uh, um, looking forward to uh, exploring the future with y'all. Very good. Ed? Yes, Ed. Ed, and also Please, uh, could you reposition the camera so we can see your face? Wonderful. And you need to unmute yourself. I don't know, is there some problem with, with the audio? Because I can't hear you. Uh, I see that he's muted. So, is no, you, he just um, muted himself. Now he's unmuted, and, and he was before. So I, so I think there might be a problem with his audio. So I think at I think you you, you could write what uh, your position uh, in the group chat, and I will re reiterate that. I will jump over to Lenka and then Michael, and when we're finished with them. Uh, I'll, I will just read your uh, statement uh, from, this, from the group chat. Do it like that. So jump over to Lenka. Yeah. Hi. Your video seems choppy, so I think it would be best if you could turn down your quality. If there is a quality setting next to the video option. There's like mute microphone, turn camera off, and ad adjust bandwidth in search. And if you turn that down completely, you at least uh, can send us audio. Superb. So, uh, yeah. And if you could now just unmute the microphone, we could also listen to you. It would be amazing. Otherwise, I have to switch to Michael. It's sad because you want to play your introduction to him. Well, task has to go on, so I will have to switch to Michael now. So let's go to Michael. All right. Can you hear me all right? We can hear you. Cool. Uh, so I'm Mike. I'm living out in Portland, Oregon. Uh, I run a little like critical theory bookstore project working on some publishing and uh, different community projects. Um, my, I don't have a formal background uh, in theory uh, or philosophy, uh, mostly like self-taught and was just a passion of mine for a long time. Uh, my formal training is actually in cooking where I worked in uh, fine dining for about 10 years as a chef, um, but uh, took a kind of like refocus and um, started this project and just kind of really focusing on books and learning more. So I've been taking uh, different seminars uh, where I can and recently joined the center about uh, a few months ago. And now I'm my third class, plus I'm taking uh, one-on-ones with Reza. And um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this seminar and stoked to be hanging out with y'all. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. So, I think we. So, wait. Oh, 
Lenka, I think it would be best if you just write, write it down in uh, in the group chat, and then I'll reiterate it. Because that is the fastest. If you wait uh, for your computer to restart, that takes uh, like five to ten minutes, and five to ten minutes is the silence that we don't want to have here. Ed just came back, so it might be that Ed is go-to person right now. So Ed, uh, uh, is your audio working? If not, then please write, write it in the group chat. Uh, your microphone is not working or something like that. And no. No. I can hear, I can't hear any noise. Oh, or no. So maybe both of you just write something in the description. Uh, in the group chat, which is to the right, and I'll just read it. it can be a short blah blah. What you, what your interests are, what you studied, what you want to study, what your practice is, something like that. Patrick, do you think we should like launch into just our introduction while they're doing this, and we can? I'll read. We can stop to read. Ah, oh, never mind. He's quick. Okay. I'll. So this is Ed. Filmmaker from Mexico City, working in documentary films through philosophical concept, concerned with alternative conception of space time and trying to speculate on what Latin American futurism could be. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Ed. That's super cool. Um, uh, Tony and, and Francois, should I start? I think so. What would be the best? Okay. So, thanks for sharing um, all of your biographies. They're really cool, and I think we're going to be um, collaborating a lot, um, all of us together, on questions of the future. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a little short thing um, it's it is a problem of the future especially in philosophy oh uh, wait there is Lenka she also gave, gave her shop intro <laughs> if I read it through because I already wrote, wrote it sure um you agree okay good then I'll read it oh okay so this is Lenka I finished my MA uh, last uh, my MA year uh, and I hope to st start my PhD this January. I work on the Lewis and the third synthesis. I want to put into question the necessity of the future. Yeah. Also, yeah. social work with homeless people and people suffering mental disorders. And I want to work with that experience philosophically. Not sure how yet. Maybe I'm later. Sorry. So I'll go back to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's really cool. Um, OK, so I'm going to start with reading this thing, which is the problem of the, of the future in philosophy. Um, OK, so why is the future such a crucial problem for philosophers? Philosophical reason, believing that it can account for the span of history in its own theoretical edifice, attempts to preserve the future as though the future were imminent to the reason of its philosophical history. Philosophers know how to preserve the future only if the future promises for them the continuation of its history's origin, that is, the fulfillment of the unfulfillable history of reason. The future, in this sense, in this context, promises to be another contingent locution of the unfulfillable history of reason, a locution shapeless in the present, but formative to the past. The truth of the future is yet to come. So this is the standard account of philosophical reason in its relation to history. 
the problem, of course, the problem with all of these philosophical accounts that I've mentioned is that they believe that time is the articulation or time can be the language for the articulation of our reason. Where, whereby rendering the thinking of our future within the firmly entrenched parameters of our present. These philosophical accounts of the future is nothing but the pres preservation of a conservative humanism. These futures are merely derivatives, derivatives of our past that remains content in articulating themselves through the lived parameters of the present. So what I'm saying simply is that when philosophers want to think of the future, we're thinking of the future qua the lived parameters of the present. But who says that the time of our present will in any way be indicative of the time of our future? Resting ourselves out of the propagation of a conservative presentism, thinking the future would be thinking against the presence of historical time and hence philosophical time. The future is such a crucial problem for philosophers because it presents us with the task of thinking adequately to that which needs to be thought, but is not yet an object for our thought. And we, that is to say, like we need to think about the future, but we don't know what the object of that thought is. Or at least we don't know how to objectify it in a one sense, right? And so how do we think this object of the future? How do we stop our philosophical, de philosophical dependence on the history of thought as an operational tool for thinking the future? That is, how do we give the future the accord of a thought, of our thought necessary for it, for the future? What kind of philosophical tools would we need to address this object of the future? Um, so, is that clear to everybody? Like, are there any, is that somewhat legible? Does it make sense? Okay, so if that makes sense, um, I would like to give five to ten minutes to everybody uh, for an exercise. And the exercise is, let's say we are going to think about the future. How do we think about this future without recourse to historical or philosophical time as embedded imminently within the structures of our reason? How do we think about the future as an object of thought that doesn't, that isn't already um, bound to the lived parameters of our temporal time? So, within five to ten minutes, um, try to think about ways in which operations or tools or however you want to come to think about it, ways in which we can find a future that is separated, decolored from philosophical and historical temporality, if that makes sense. And yeah, I'll, I'll be interested to get back to you guys on this. And Jovan, I think to start it off, give them an, an example, like yours. Say that again to me? I think to start this off, you maybe present them one example, like one of your ones, one, like an example of what you're expecting them to respond to. Like what would be one of your ways of doing that? Right, so one of the ways that we are thinking about this is um, through fiction. And this is what Anne Francoise would be talking about. But of course, not it, the fiction is not like a necessary medium. There are many other kinds of mediums or ways in which we can come to think about the future without time. Um, if, but I, I get, I, Tony, do you have an example that you would want to help me elaborate on so that it makes sense, I guess? To think the future beyond its sense of temporality means to think of the future spatially or think of the future as already existent in our present. 
and you're welcome to cut me off and, and tell me if I'm interpreting this wrong. So, so to think of the future as relation, right, as a connection point to something else, or something, um, uh, not a future out there or a future to come, uh, but rather um, something to be constructed. I don't know if this is helping at all. So one thing that we discuss in our in our group is is a term called collective intimacy, which we will go into. It will come up a lot, but th this idea of collective intimacy, if if we want to use other uh, closer relational concepts like radical openness, things like this, that's a spatial. It's a space. It's a space in which we create to perform acts of collective intimacy, right? So it's, um, for us, that's one, that's that's essential to the future of the generic, generic epistemology. But uh, I think the, yeah, so to reiterate, reiterate Jovan's question, it's just, it's not to think like in terms of um, not to think in terms of like what you think this course is going to be about, but in your own work, how are you approaching the idea of the future? Yeah, it would be great if. So um, yeah, it would be great if like through the through the materials of your own work, like um, through your own like discipline or domain, or the the objects that you're concerned about, how would we think about those things? What is the kind of is there a kind of connectivity that is not uh, bound back to a temporal relation that defines the future? So like, yeah. Um. If if it doesn't make sense, please just like just um unmute and just talk about it, and so we could have a clearer exposition of what is, of what we're, you know, um, what we're doing on or talking about. And I guess I would clarify in a sense to say that uh, it's meant to be a challenge to everybody in the course, that question off the bat is meant to challenge people. Um, and we're all still defining it. So, in the aspect, we're, so it's not to be, I don't know, I'm trying to uh, encourage people if they're not sure just to even say what they, what they think. So I'm going to mute them and if any, we'll, we'll let it go for a little bit of silence. Anybody that wants to talk, pick up and, and join. If not, we'll move on. Well, I, I guess, um, I don't know from like from the readings it seemed like also there was like the two linguistic modes that um we were talking about so like the future as an unknown or like the future as an imaginary um the future as like a mode of a mode of communication maybe um so like a way and that could be like between two people talking but also like you know like something that is communicated in public space that like nods toward the future does that make sense um yeah, that's one. That's one thought. But yeah, like a, like a, um, yeah, sort of like a mode that, like a way of speaking or like a way of communicating that, like encapsulates uncertainty. Does that? I don't know if that makes sense. I think you're actually on a very good point. Like the one thing that you pointed out that's really that's that that is very important is that the, the unknown, the uncertain element is definitely the speculative object that we are approaching and essentially is becomes definitely related to the idea of the future or the way that we're trying to define the future. The future as unknown is is right there off the bat is a good we'll present that as one of our tools. So yes. That as a as a communicative thing, there is gonna be layers of that that we're gonna kinda of talk about. Um in the, uh, perhaps the future imagine a world with public space but in the same time simulate simulate other worlds and it's a double the light with opacity with uh, etc 
but the idea of public space is very interesting. Is there any other people that want to guess? Do you have an idea? Okay. Well, <laughs> the other ones that can't speak as well, you can put in the chat. I'm following the chat, so you can continue that. Um, if you end up coming up with something or or you have a question, uh, you don't feel like you want to interrupt, just put it in the chat. Uh, that's the only thing I want to say before. Um, I'm going to hand it off to the one who has been working on this idea for for, for very long, much longer than Jovan and I were, were, uh, were babies in this one. Uh, and she's been, she's been great for this, but she did great for our work and this project, and so I want to introduce uh, Anton Schmidt. Going to provide a lot of the content, a lot of the nitty-gritty of the context. So. Mm -hmm. You then. Yes, yes, yes. The the first course, the title of the first course is the trip of the fiction. We'll see after. Why? The, it is a general preparation for the course because the aim of this course is to create some idea of invention in philosophy, art and sciences. We postulate that an idea of the future is embedded in invention. We will develop these two ideas together with experimentation. But this is possible only with a theoretical approach. We will first expose the general hypotheses. They are especially about the multiplicities, the continuities and the cuts, the set of trajectories, personal and collective. Basic hypothesis one. The multiplicity of right of philosophies with a principle of generosity. It is possible to pass from a philosophy to another and a principle of non exclusion. No philosophy has precedence or supremacy over other. Two. We accept the multiplicity of regimes of science to disciplinary, non-disciplinary, interdisciplinary. And we admit the multiplicity of form, forms of art. So the idea of multiplicity is very important. If you work on Deleuze, it is very interesting. Uh, his trajectory is Plato, Spinoza, uh, Bergson, uh, Ber Nietzsche, Bergson, Deleuze. It is a, a trajectory. I made an hypothèse, uh, uh, another hypothèse, that it is not only one trajectory that gives a philosophy, but it is the multiplicity of right of philosophy that can create, create new philosophies. So, it is uh, for me creation invention in philosophy is uh, not uh, an history of critic little critics I, I i did not the great critic of kant etc is not the question of critic and and uh, and uh, exclusion but it is not it is uh, the condition is the admiss the admission of the multiplicity of right of philosophy. And the basic methodological concepts are one, so three hypotheses and two concepts. One, the integrative object. What is an integrative object? It is a non-synthetizable object. 
in the, the new object of science, GMO, nano, etc., are not understandi understandable if we think they can be the of different disciplinary perspectives. It is always a cut, a non-synthesis. We will develop this for science, but too for invention in philosophy. So, it is a cut, egal x, in the convergence. And the second concept is the generic space. It is a concept I cannot uh, 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 show a generic space. It's, it's just a concept. Huh? There are not, not direct relations between disciplines. It is my hypothesis. Between disciplines, there are not relations. As in Lacan, there are not um, not um, uh, sexual relationships. Mm. But we can construct a, a generic space to pass from a discipline to another, from a multiplicity to another. The first example in history of generic space was created by the mathematician and physicist Henri Poincaré. Poincaré, I, I will. Uh... Ah, Poincaré. Uh, and uh, I think he made the first, the first uh, project of genetic spice without use the term of your science is very that uh, the uh, as a uh, as a uh, as lacatos as popper as uh, it's very very interesting it's very interesting it is the creator of genetic space in science method of choice and use of the hypothesis to build science. There is, in principle, an infinity of possible hypotheses. All science or engineering houses allow it. And I think that Tony was develop it with the concept of abduction. So, I, I prepare a glossary for the course, uh, I will present this glossary now. And this glossary, at the end of the course, with all your skills, we can change, modify, add, etc. So this this glossary would be on the on the material of the hangout, and uh, we have to 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 develop it. So. Uh, all of you, all of you uh, can uh, collaborate with this glossary. And this glossary form a sort of, of generic space to put our thinking, philosophy, art, science, etc. So it's okay. Are there questions or, or reactions? It's okay with the hypothesis and the concept? Yes. Yes? Bon, good. Alors, in the, in the, in the glossary, I have now the first term is not such. It is in French, avenir. We have two terms in French for such. A term who suppose that we have a continuity from present to to a time who come up. Uh, it is a quanti I I am in the present and I can 
uh, invent, uh, suppose what what can what can come up. So, future is another concept. I think in English it is not this uh, this uh, difference. It is so. I have um, a term for uh, avenir. Avenir indicates a continuity of the present at a time not yet known. The Greeks placed the avenir behind their backs, the past before them. I have a verse of Virgil, Ibat Ibant obscuri sola sub nocte per umbram. The future the, the avenir includes only very partial lines, and this fact only prolongs or recapture existing ones. The avenir, so, is not exactly the future. It is the difference of continuity and cuts. I think we have to transform the, the temporality, the temporality of future. To, to see his action as a mode on the present. And this mode is not the same than to come up. So. The second word is biology. Biology is interesting because it is a range of disciplines very numerous. Multiplicity as a model for understanding disciplines that seek unity. This indicates a big change in epistemology. Biology is a symbol for a multiplicity. It is a working house, house is a discipline, huh? a working house in this generic space where it invites many scientists, mathematicians, computer engineers, technicians. It's uh, alphabetical order, uh, the third. Collective. What? The collective. What, like God, comes to the idea, as in Levinas, without for forgetting his son, pianist and composer, the metamorphose and the requiem. The collective can be dispersed or assembled in a House of science or philosophy, contemporary technologies allow, allow all kinds of figures of the collective. And after collective intimacy, mode of exchange in interdisciplinary regimes. Suppose a genetic space of the science. Con adapted no psychiatry intimate collective is a method of care outside the walls containing just directed to all the people concerned the exchange for intimate that allows the outsider to find an identity inside the insider house Si Lucien Unpatin, Avner Perez, as an ethno-psychiatrist. Experiencing it in science or philosophy change everyone, just like the exercise in the ethical matrix from Nottingham. This change will make other disciplines look different while bringing with them what they do not know what they do not know. It is very important. You, you see the traveler and his shadow, Nietzsche, the shadow. Collective intimacy is a, uh, we see, it's a concept, it's a, it's a condition for change the relationship between, between the collaborators. Another is complexity. Notion and method too simple to account for contemporary science. It's now too simple, the, the complexity. 
Nevertheless, the notion of complexity, developed by the biologist Jean-Marie Leguet, uh, was, was very important to understand the, the, the difficulties of biology where we have to, to add concepts of, uh, of physiology, of embryology, of mechanics, of etc. And this, this multiplicity was interpreted as, in com as a complexity. But, but the complexity was thought with the idea of convergence of, of the perspective. So, another, another term is ethics. I I Can I jump in a little bit about complexity to tie yes. it back to um, what Christy was talking about earlier? So, the, the question that I proposed at the beginning of our class was to untether time with from a, a, a kind of temporal rationality. That time, that reason is in fact imminent to time and we can think about the future and, we, and that the reason of our future is imminent to the reason of our present, the reason of our present time. So this is a problem that we are trying to separate to say that if the future actually has an, ob an object or different like mode of inventive time, then it would not be a part of you know uh, the present uh, a temporal sequence. Okay, so what is important about the temporal sequence to me as a philosopher is that. Is it that of conceptual synthesis? So, how do we usually philosophize nowadays? We take one concept, we have like a conceptual identity, so we have one concept, and then we link it up with another concept, and then we link it up with another concept, and their and their identity um, of these concepts form a kind of synthesis that we say, "Oh, this is what reality it's not exactly is." Exactly, a synthesis. It's not exactly. A it's a, a sort of generic space to, to abord differently the future. The yes, yes. And, and I think it's necessary because it is very difficult to, to distinct, to distinct um, future and present because we think our present not as dead so the future is in our present too and to treat the future we have to 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 uh, connect with a lot of terms we can choice we can it's it's contingent the 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 choice is contingent but we, but with this contingence see we can after construct the, the, the concept of future and the, and the lived future. The concept and the lived, etc. Et but I think it is very difficult to distinct present and future. We know intimately what is future, but we know intimately now. If we, we see future, as a time, only as, as, as the time. Yes, it is a lot of explication of science fiction, of, pro, of perspective, of scenario, of imaginative, of etc. It is a lot, a lot of talk. But these talk are external, are as storytelling as, as you. As you see, as storytelling, but I still important, but they are not the essence of the future. To, to my evidence of the storytelling and the public space, I think we have to, to, to work differently the idea of future. And for this, I have a sort of uh, 
voc vocabulary, uh, conceptual vocabulary, who is a sort of space to, to be uh, susceptible to, to trip between art, science and philosophy. So it is not a, a dogma, it is just uh, some, some, uh, some contingency uh, concept to continue. But all of you can add, can modify this glossary. The relation of future. You cannot talk of the future only. Our future is uh, obscurity, opacity, is uh, etc. It is a lot of themes. It's a grace aussi. Je sais pas comment on dit grâce en, en anglais. Grâce. A theological concept. La grâce. What is a, what is the term in English? Uh, grace. 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 Yes, grace. Culture is a grace too. Huh? If you if you see Michelangelo, huh? Michelangelo uh, have a culture. If you see, for example, the Moise in the in the 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 temple for Jules II, it is a, a Michelangelo um, sculpt a mo a moshe a moshe. God, why grace of God? Oh yes, Michelangelo, Michelangelo. Yes, yes. And if we see this moshe, Freud said, it is impossible to see. If Moshe is is up from Raj against the Jude who adore the the Vodor, huh? or if it is in it is dispers and and. Uh, and he was uh, he was uh, sitting, uh, nothing, nothing making. In this culture, there is a movement. We cannot decide if it is up or bottom. It is a line. This line is very important. It is the line uh, who. Uh, uh, Michelangelo uh, said, "Figura serpentinata, figura serpentinata, who was a uh, law for the sculptor and the painter, but to a theological concept in Michelangelo. And if you see uh, the Michelangelo in the Sixteen Chapel." You see this movement uh, with the altar, with the paradise, with God, with the etc., and with the movement, the movement. And I think uh, uh, a philosophical concept is not, and the future in particular, is not a fixed term. If we see, we, if we see as we see Moïse, long time we cannot see if it is up the bottom it is a figura serpentinata so the future have an, an, effect, an effect on philosophy on art on science it's very it's very important but it is not one trajectory but sets of trajectory we can see uh, uh, in uh, in isolation one trajectory. It is as models. We cannot have one one model. It is always a multiplicity of models in science. So so I will have some 
ça me ça me word to have to have some uh, some common common coordinate uh, 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 coordinate coordinate and after you can change this with your your proper uh, skills and interest okay so it's a we're having a break and for to us the break now no no are you saying uh, sorry i misunderstood uh just no. uh, what were you saying qu'est-ce que nous faisons bah moi je pensais continuer le, le glossaire oh okay pardon uh, okay. Uh, my, my moi bad. je pensais continuer il faut il faut continuer un peu parce que sinon on n'aura jamais fini non non absolument bon tous ces mots seront alors éthique qu'est-ce que j'ai what is ethics in my science or in the multiplicity I, def, I, I am defining ethics as the science or the knowledge generic knowledge of borders if we have no this respect of borders we cannot have the de democracy in science and uh, and in philosophy so my definition of ethics is generic knowledge of border contemporary ethical problems in a scientific society are determined by the way in which the relationships between disciplines have been organized upstream it demands a democracy of disciplines all have the same wait there is no parent disciplines for object x for example G, uh, gmo are not considered as products of molecular biology we have i have uh, worked this with a biologist uh, muriel mombrini in a, in a, in a project collective project So ethics will ensure that all disciplinary houses in space have their, their place, even though some workers may move from one house to another. There are possible repetitions, reversal changes in the source of flow of knowledge. You very the, the, the concept of flow, flow of knowledge is now very important because the experimental science, sciences Uh, changes very very uh, quickly now such a cut off operator i will treat fetcher as an operator what one receives from the fetcher mode or possibly time makes it possible to modify the parameters of the present to know the fetcher it usually over determined by other concepts The most interesting is to under-determine it, not over, but under. The future opens, but do not so request change. We take the parameters, we multiply the dimensions. The future can then help to understand the new objects of science. See also the open work of Umberto Eco. Right. After generic, the generic is three. There are three philosophers who use the concept. It is um, 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 Feuerbach, Badiou, and Laruel. Three philosophers. This concept. Um, it is a sort of Occam Hazard. A reduction machine. It's an equivalent of transcendental aesthetics, giving the condition of the first human experience. It allows a refundation of philosophy. In Badiou, by the four procedures politics, poetry, science, love. In La Ruelle, there is a given that has the form of a priori. It is the primitive forms of philosophy which have the structure of both 
a lowering and the rebound as the serpentine line, figura serpentinata. The generic permits the projection of the disciplinary concepts in the space independent of the discipline where heterogeneous concept can be combined in the new way. One of the first great examples of generic life was built by Poincaré. In an infinite space, the generic becomes all natural. They become the common of all, the cabins and house that travel the or settle the like little planets. Generic epistemology. Epistemology that does not rely on classical examples relatively independent of disciplines, works with them but not in them, and gives itself the means to understand the future sciences. It works with operators, primitive, fundamental procedures, work in preparation with Muriel Mombrini Doudet, and an article with a, a paper with Armand Actuel. This is a very mild paradigm shift which does not negate the above, but immerse in an open space. It defeats opposition, juxtapose notion, finds new relation between them. The future makes it possible to rework the notion, to cut them to open new dimensions. After, after, there are a lot, I, I think, I will give in the material. It is hypothesis. It is mathematics. It is non-standard heterogeneity. It is non-synthesis. It is object X, unknown. It is philosophy. It is physics. It is structural problems of contemporary research, current research. Experimental science contra against knowledge flow, silence, under determination, utopias, pubs, vocation, without or without method, and zigzag. Uh, how I I cannot perhaps uh, develop all. Uh, Qu'est-ce que vous voulez? What, uh, que, comment voulez-vous que l'on continue? Tony. I think Tony um, is Tony yes. Uh yes. Yes. So, yes. what would you did everything? Uh, uh, all. Uh, what you think? I continue this all the term. This, you, um, is everything okay, clear? You are in here and you desire, desire. I think it would be best if you continue. So, hypothesis. The idea, you know, in philosophy, the first to have. Uh, to, to use very, very interesting. Ah, Bettina, for me, nothing is very clear. I am quite puzzled, but in a, in a good way. So I would prefer to just go through everything. So no, no problem, because it is impossible to understand all in a, in a first time, in an instant. With the eight course, we, we, you have a instrumental concept to, to act for action and thinking. So, so no, no, no problem. Philosophy, we cannot understand philosophy in one act. So, a little patience and after, all, all would be Ah, the meaning of grass in this concept. It is the idea of uh, Michelangelo. Because, because, 
the linea serpentinata is linked for him with the grace of God, who is some, some linea between God and the, and the human people. So, it is a very, very important book on the, on the art and la figura serpentinata. Oh. Uh, I, will, I, will, I will give the reference, but it is in French. But it is an extraordinary, uh, an extraordinary uh, book on the Jude and Christians in in Sixth Saint Chapel. It so I entrance was if I can ah. talk a little bit about the meaning of grace. I think grace in this context is very crucial because it's different. It's philosophical difference that isn't so okay. In the history of philosophy, difference in Hegel, right? Difference is violent. That we need a kind of violent, 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 like in the in the history de la philosophy, oui. Oui. Uh, difference say violent. Difference is force. In the history of philosophy, difference has been violent. But in this sense, grace comes in as a different concept of difference, which is non-violent. Yes, yes. The concept who in philosophy uh, developed by, by Felix Raveso. It is a um, French philosopher, a friend of, of Bergson, uh, Raveso, pardon, excuse me, voilà. Felix Raveso and Bergson and, uh, and La Ruelle. In non-philosophy, the figura serpentinata is very important. In the book on ecology, in Last Humanity of La Ruelle, the, the, the ecology is not a um, horizontal task, task um, about the earth, but he constructs a vertical movement to complete ecology. So, it is the figura serpentinata. So, uh, grace is a, is, a, is, a, is a term, is, is just a term, but this term, um, we, we, we do not fix on this term. It's not necessary. the interpretation of uh, Michelangelo so in, in 16th chapter. But this idea of Linea serpentinata, figura serpentinata is very important. Um, Bettina, um, uh, do you want to talk uh, a little? Sorry, who was that? Oh. Uh, uh, Bettina, do you want to talk a little bit about your question about the connection between God and the future? Um, what do you mean by that? Yes. It's a very, very good, very, very great book. Right. Um, so Bettina said, no, I just wrote that because she said... No, that. no, Bettina, I said not that <laughs> Michelangelo had a direct line between God and the earth. <laughs> It's, no, it is as a method, <laughs> just as a method. Yeah. But this me as a concept, a concept not not fixed is a movement, a, a movement. But this movement said it is a direct plane between. The, uh, this is perhaps his idea, but I, I do not think. But that. If we represent the theological ideas, 
Marco Michelangelo, this representation is a presentation not fixed but with a movement, as this movement is figura serpentinata. So, it, you have a metaphysics interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think I think the verticality is too important in science. To we will we add dimensions with hypothesis, but in in philosophy too, Levinas, the ethics of Levinas is a vertical line. Ah, c'est c'est bon, c'est but uh, do not fix on one term. We will construct. Uh, uh, landscape, and in this landscape, we we can we can travel and trip, and understand why the trip come from future to the philosophy, to the art, to the sciences, and is not blocked in the idea of future. Future is an operator for philosophy, for art, for. For, for life. Uh, Anfasso, uh, the last Continue. sentence was cut off. Could you reiterate it? Could you repeat your last sentence because it was cut off? Ah, yes, yes. The, the, the future is a sort of operator. Operator on art, on science, of philosophy, but too on our life. If we we transform the temporal idea of the future as a space spatial idea, spatial idea, as a cut, the linguist uh, has it for the future. Is it is a time or a mode? A mode as a subjunctive. It is very difficult to, to, to decide if future is a time or a moment. This, uh, this uh, enigma, uh, seriously, for the understanding of philosophy. And I use future as an operator for our present. But it is future. But fetch without the time, but with the mode. The mode is spatial, is a cut. Is a cut in the parameters of the presence. Donc, it's an operator of transformation. We project à venir, to come up, but it is not a continuity. If we scenario in science, in perspective. We, we construct the scenario as a model or a set of models. But after we compare this set of models with our present, our one representation of our present. And with this comparison, we mute, we, 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 we change the parameters to correct. So the future is not from present to become up, but it is a return in the present. A return in the present. If we have some idea of future generation, huh, we have to change our action now. The future is a return on the present. Did you accept the, this idea? And in this idea, uh, an important time is hypothesis. The first in philosophy was Leibniz. Hypothesis are necessary in the discourse de métaphysique when the series are infinite. Human cannot uh, understand infinite series. So, 
human have to construct hypotheses to understand. And I think it is the first use of hypotheses in philosophy. Plato uh, said hypotheses are for mathematics, but in in philosophy it was it is principles. Uh, uh, so this this problem I think in contem current philosophy, com contemporary philosophy, it is very interesting to 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 have this idea of hypothesis. If if we have in uh, in regards the multiplicity of philosophies, so the philosophy is philosophy by hypothesis. But hypothesis is a cut. As Peter is not in continuity. If in a mathematical reasoning you use hypothesis, it's in the same time a cut in the re reasoning, but a relationship with other disciplines. It's a, the the idea of hypothesis is very is very complex. I can develop it. It is very different of that of conjecture. That of Popper conjecture. Conjecture suppose a continuity from the present to the future. Hypothesis did not make this difference. Voilà. And mathematics. Mathematics, I said, only living exists and is not a dominant discipline. We, we, I, I suppose a democracy of discipline. I cannot have uh, the idea that mathematics are only pure and only on the whole the scientific disciplines. And it's the same for the philosophy. I cannot think that philosophy is a generality uh, uh, on the on all these disciplines. It's just a discipline in the next the other. Next the other we have to do. And now in the current research there are a lot of Work works on the relationship between mathematics and experimental uh, sciences, and the idea of mathematics uh, change now. So I, I, uh, I, I, uh, I, I cited a, a livre of a book of Xavier Renou. Alors. For living mathematics, the models are in France, but not only in France, Herr Lothmann and Alexander Grothendieck. You know, category theory. You, know, you, you, you have some questions on category theory. I am not a specialist of category theory, but uh, I suppose that this is very important. Yeah. Ensuite, an, uh, uh, another term is non-standard heterogeneity. Uh, in classical physics, we think that mathematics can homogenize the real. Have heterogeneity. We translate in variables, in constant, and we can, with equation, uh, uh, render homogene the heterogeneity. But now, in current sciences, uh, it is no more possible to reduce complexity to one discipline. So, there is uh, an heterogeneity the space itself, the simulation of comments, allows the construction of compatibilities and hypercompatibilities, which can accommodate models whose fundamental assumptions are contradictory. 
is we have a, we have a lot of models, and uh, among these models, there are models who who, rep, uh, who, who have hypotheses contradictories. So we have no more criteria to say this model is better than uh, that another, and uh, the epistemology change with this with the multiplicity of models. So we have uh, uh, the idea of compatibilities, as in Leibniz and Poincaré, or hypercompatibility is now very important, not only in philosophy, as, uh, as, uh, as in Leibniz. Another word is non-synthesis. Most current scientific objects no longer allow synthesis. I, I discuss with a lot of directory of laboratory. We cannot now uh, assure that the object of the work in the laboratory can be synthesized. It's a very great difficult. It's a difficult for governance too, uh, for political governance. C est, c est, it's very difficult. This is not a limit of science, but a methodological failure to be incorporated into the method. As it did uh, uh, 20 years ago of uncertainty. Non-synthesis is a fundamental characteristic of integrative objects. Overall, non-synthesis is a method to be integrated in, in uh, in, in scientific reasoning now. Object X. A contemporary scientific object is no longer given. It's not given. Its properties are unexpectedly distributed among the disciplines at stake. In addition, a search object is always multiple. It seeks its generic writing without of ever complexity finding it. Its relation to society is multiple and at multiple scales, its evaluation is not mononormal. It's a great difficulty for scientific research now. I can develop this after. Another term is philosophy. I, I present philosophy as particular mode of invention. It's a superposition of voice, says a priori and empirical, and fiction, addition of a point of externality. New style, new, new style to work with philosophies, not in one of them that suppose a generic space. Um, in this mode of invention, philosophy is close to music. One always, always wonder what philosophy is about. Mathematics, as bad you. Mathematics and philosophy are des sœurs, comment on dit des sœurs? Pas brother, mais... Ah. <laughs> des sœurs. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, philosophy is a uh, Close to physics by Laruel. Closer with art in the Bauhaus. All this is true. We must not reduce philosophy to its tradition, but as music to invent it. Invention is music, is a superposition of, of voice. It is the definition of Jean Sebastien Bach. He creates inventions. You see in music, and these inventions are superposition of voices. Physics. It's a discipline which seeks unity. It is a dream who, who is who is always with physics. It gives itself as a model of theory centered epistemology. Physics is a beautiful set of theoretical and experimental structures. 
Many epistemologists take mechanics of physics as a model. It takes a generic space to give an epistemological status to other sciences. The classical epistemology is on physics. After, after, on, on biology of chemistry, in, on human science, on etc. But uh, it is very difficult to, to, to leave the hypothesis from physics to understand the other science. And the generic space permits this. Enfin, structural problems of contemporary research. One, the object X is multiple. We cannot, if we have a great laboratory, the, the object is always multiple, even if it is one term, as cancer, as environment, etc. Yeah? Second, interdisciplinary with, uh, with uh, this X object. It is in there, but without generic writing. It is a very difficult problem because if we collaborate a um, uh, practicist of chirurgy and a uh, 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 modelist of biology, for one, the statistics is, are very important, for the other, no. So, the generic writing is very difficult to construct. Yeah. And three, it's, there are difficult relationships between specialized language and common sense. In medicine, it is uh, evident, the specialist language is uh, very different than the lived of the passion, and uh, this is a, a great difficulty. It's a bomb, it's a bomb, I think, uh, social, is a bomb. So we have to construct the concept. They can construct a bridge between the specialist languages and the common sense. So, uh, in the structural... Uh, and now, experimental sense, or knowledge flow. In the new new science as biology of synthesis, there are, there are no more experimental science in the sense that we are mathematics, physics, etc., and experience after with mathematical uh, devices. But there are a lot of fragments of science, fragments of informatics, Fragment of mathematical modeling, fragment of biology, etc., and there are flow between these fragments. There are not, no more the structure of experimental science. This is a great change in epistemology, and the, the generic space uh, permit to understand contemporary science. Knowledge is no longer just big static sets, but allows flow. There's a serpentine line. Silence. I think to cage. Number and flow without voice, without rhythm, without sound, without pitch, without timber, without range, range, but condition of possibility of the voice and the rhythm, etc. Thanks to the extension allowed by the method of without, we will develop this. It's very important. In science, only the disciplines are talkative. Science itself is silent by dynamic. Interdiscipline is a mixture and an alternation of languages and silences. See the music, for example, of Yacinto Chelsea. Built like, like this. The silence of the open space allows a new music, sound or sound, which makes hear or feel the superimposition of voice. Another important 
in the method is under determination, not over determination in, as in Marxism, but under determination. And that it consists we if we have flow of of uh, knowledge as in uh, synthesis uh, biology um, uh, bio biology de synthèse we 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 need a discipline no positive but to organize the coherence so an indetermination consists of using a discipline without its positive results to give coherence to fragments of articulated knowledge to produce new knowledge. On the other hand, under determination participates in the decision not to explain a notion by those who put it into play. For example, not to explain the future by the promise, the scenario, the perspective which over -determinate. I, I wrote uh, an article on this, uh, who the, the, the title is The L'Obscure Cogito de la Fidelité. We can read Freud by sub-determining it by thermodynamics. Michel Foucault by geology. François Laruelle by quantum. This will have effects of non new philosophies written perhaps by people who are not yet now. The name of utopias. Utopias tend to be treated today as real. It's a great uh, book, Utopias, Real Utopias, the right. And, um, and, uh, and the ideology of accelerationism born many years ago at the University of Warwick. Etc. In the generic space, utopia can be generalized as uchrony effect of the cut of the future, euphony transformation of the musical model. Another term is trouble. In interdisciplinary mode, double no longer makes sense. Double is effective in single disciplinary approach. Duped is replaced by the disorder, at first spontaneous, then, then worked in a inside fuel reverie. It's a term of Armand Actuel. What can also be felt by theatre's actors when in the game of the drama they meet another singer or actor? The disorder supposes a multiplicity of agents. Steve is a monodiscipline within the framework of a particular question. See the disorder as a positive effect of multiplicity. We have trouble between between uh, we because we have uh, a lot of different skills, but after with collective intimacy, we will uh, create some common vocation, vocation, vocation. Kierkegaard said report of all human to the future. Vocation is our relationship with the future. Every human has a vocation, at least that of being a human. Et puis, il y a encore deux mots, « without » ou « without method ».« Suppose a number of properties to an object. »« And delete one of them by hypothesis. »« New knowledge will then be added to replace those that have been deleted. »« It is a method of extension of fiction. » Passage from one real to another real. Uh, in uh, Ecole des Mines de Paris, for invention of new technology, we do not add a new property, but we, we fix 
a lot of properties of the object uh, desired object and we supreme by hypothesis one very important and we have to replace this property by other from other disciplines and it is a reorganization of the ice of disciplines so we can create an object without complicate it by addition but we can rethinking it by by abandon some hypothesis it's now it's now very current in technology ah, not only in philosophy in philosophy it is uh, in in uh, non philosophy it is current without uh, what is philosophy without transcendental perhaps uh, but it is two very very uh, used in the anglo-saxon uh, philosophy of mathematics and uh, and uh, in these in these um, uh, philosophy of mathematics one suppose that no one see mathematics so to now mathematics we we have to have some properties it is demonstration it is structure it is object it is number it is space it is etc etc and we search what is mathematics without object without number without structure with a demonstration and so we extend by means of other disciplines the the importance and the vision of mathematics and the last term is zigzag. It's a tool of thought by Russell to, to avoid the contradiction. But also in the theory of design, we can just a moment without on an F and after we have zigzag between the, the different disciplines to construct an object. The zigzag allows to move from a concept to knowledge without going through the totality. Ah, it evades the totality. It avoids the classic contradiction of interdisciplinarity and produces true fiction, unexpected extension. So the conclusion is on the reality and unreality of the future, the mystery of the future is to unlock both it reality and its own reality at ours and in a unpredictable way. The future makes undecidable liberty or determinism. It crosses them in a certain thin line that makes us touch the one and the other without us being able to have certainty. The future is not nothing. It is what makes people does see uncertainty and the unknown. It's close to the risk, but a risk lived statistical risk. It is currently modulated by a kind of paradigm shift where we are more concerned about the current society. What place is this new paradigm, the future? It is up to us to build it. The future does not give itself everything and demands our vocation. We will see at the end of the course if the glossary is modified or enriched. It is true your work and our as an experimental work to stimulate invention. So I will have would you would you react to prepare the the current I think the, the classical epistemology theory the, theory centered is no more cap capable to to explain the current science. Classical history of philosophy is 
Einstein זה כוחן פילוסופי. There was a, uh, a question uh, by Lenga while you were discussing. And, um, he says that she would be interested, she'd be interested in uh, commenting on epistemological anarchism, pluralism, regarding the notion of the democracy of justice. So, do you see the question in the chat, Anne Francois? J'ai pas bien compris ce que tu disais, Tony. So, uh, Et tu peux écrire un peu. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tony. Sorry. Uh, the question of epistemological pluralism, Anne Francois, as in. Epistemological realism, yes. Pluralism. I can. Yes, yes, I can. There are two epistemological. Realism. There, the first realism is the idea that we can have dialectical relationship between the science and the real. So, as in Bachelor, it's very important. But for current science, uh, with model, modelization, simulation, not, on, not only theories, what are very important, but not only, with the realism is a little different because uh, if we accept the realism of all the very different and heterogeneous sciences, if we accept this pluralism without relativism, we have to postulate a real, very cut by uh, in relationship with science. Katarina Kalozova is a term, the cut of the rule. It's not direct relationship between science and real, between philosophies and real. Real is a condition, indifferent condition, to have this multiplicity. It's the idea of non soda philosophy, for example. So, yes, I am a realist, but I think this realist is too multiple and, and uh, multiple and uh, with uh, a lot of variation. And I cannot have a, a, a vision of all this variation. It's impossible. It's impossible. That this postulate of a real indifference. Uh, take, uh, give the place to the multiplicity and heterogeneity of, uh, of human creation uh, now. So, in this sense, I, I am uh, non-philosophical. But I add intermediary axiom to, to the non-philosophical thought. Because Laruel think uh, about real, about one, and the principle. I, I insist on multiplicity, on the, on the mysterious simplification of empiri empirical, and so I have to add some intermediary actions. So the, this idea on invention in philosophy and the silence of the future. It's a, it's a movement for the invention in philosophy with this multiplicity. I am realist, but with the idea it is possible to, to develop a lot of invention and a lot of a cross between the invention in science, philosophy and art. Public space was very good developed by an engineer. The name is Paris Chrysos.
and he developed the public space with collective intimacy. And he, he think about technology. And he, he thinks that the miniaturization of technologies personalizes the technologies. And he had a very interesting analysis on internet, collective intimacy, and the, 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 community, the community of developers. It's, it's, it's very, very interesting. Euh, voyons. Il y avait d'autres questions là dans le. Um, should we have a break and then we can come back with Tony's talk on abduction? D'accord. Uh, um, um, Patrick, yes. we make we make the break now. That means. But that would mean that we have we have to get some people talking uh, because I can't have a, 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 a moment of silence in the, in the hangout. Yeah, so yeah. We call everyone. Sorry, go ahead. So I continue? So either so we continue? continue or... Yes, yes. Can... So I continue. No, I, 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 I am with the idea of trip of the fiction. I mean, I, yes. I have yes. an idea. Uh, we could uh, ask the students uh, for their collaboration ideas uh, towards the glossary. Oh, very good. Very good. Very good. I think that will take at least five to ten I minutes. Think. And then yes. you can... Uh, stop uh, talking for the whole time because I know it's very tiring for professors. So I think I'll just go through with all the students and that could be our pause. Very we good. can always, always very call good. for a glossary yeah, yeah. session in every uh, session that we have uh, with each other and that will be always our, our pause. Oh, so it's a, a good idea. Yes, yes, a good so idea. I'll go and ask Michael because he was the last one before, and a, a, Andrea was the first one. So I'll ask uh, Michael if he has an uh, idea, something for the glossary. If not, I will. Uh, yeah. So you're looking for an idea for collaboration. And the project yeah yeah because uh it was written we will collaborate on a glossary as a course experiment we will develop this glossary throughout this class and with all of our collaborative efforts within our different domains of work and i think it would be best if we just now start with that collaborative effort and sorry for taking you at the first no, that's fine. I guess, yeah, I'm just at this point just mostly trying to get my head around the material. Um, and I feel like I have to do some thinking about what I could kind of contribute for collaboration for this project. The gl glossary is not the the aim, but just an, a device, just a device. Mm -hmm. I think with, I think with all the sessions, in the end, at the end, will your collaboration in invention with action, I can construct in philosophy, uh, exercise on invention, we can after uh, construct uh, 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 time to time, uh, enrich the or modify the, the the glossary, but it is a device, a landscape to to continue. So. 
So, should we um, take a five minute break and then think about um, adding to the glossary, perhaps? I really can't uh, have you uh, give you a five minute break. Um, sorry. Uh, either somebody's talking or you have to go on. I mean, I don't uh, want to do this, but I really have to force somebody to talk. And I think just having a small discussion of the students about, the, uh, about what they could offer about the glossary, coming from their perspectives of study, coming from their uh, experiences until now, uh, I don't even think it would need to be uh, a positioning towards uh, the uh, uh, already like finished words for a glossary. It just needs to be like, I could offer that. I can offer that. I have a strange idea. I'll, I'll offer it. And then we can just talk <laughs> the next time about the, the offering. And we can combine and we can bring up a, a glossary. And then we have a pause. Can I say something? Yes, yes. Yeah, can, can you hear me? I didn't have the chance to introduce myself. I got the link later. Salut. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm an architect. And uh, oh. I have now some thoughts on the things you were talking about. And also some kind of, not new terms, but uh, yeah, I don't know if that can help to the glossary, but I have some thoughts anyway. I think that uh, the concept of future has something, I, I gave a relation to anesthesia, like we, when we got, we, we get that feeling of numb, that we know that our part, when we get, a, let's say, surgery and we have anesthesia and... Uh, we're still alive, we can see our part that is there, but we don't feel it. So it's kind of maybe the opposite, like we feel that is something and after now, but we don't know it and we have to invent it. And I have um, another term that came in mind was from, from fashion actually, from Diana Vreeland, that she was keep uh, using the term faction, that is fact, and fiction that uh, and i think it relates with the future that because we need fiction we need to invent how it is going to be and we need facts actually to do it we we need to and that comes to my <laughs> field which is architecture uh, that we constantly plan we need to uh, we need to imagine social relations social activities and we need to design to construct not maybe future social activities, but it's never as we imagine it. So this kind of the need of invention and action actually to design a space and design from the smallest scale from a product to space, we need to always imagine the future and actually kind of in small parts create it. So, the other thing as a term was coincidentally i have this thing here that called it's written it's from an exhibition and uh, it's called post future i've never heard of that term and i was so surprised when i saw it so i don't know maybe it's it's i don't know maybe it's you know like i'm afraid to say it but <laughs> it's a term that it surprised me so um, I don't know, I just introduced that to you to have it as a hub, I don't know. So, yeah, and another thing is that as an architect, I can see, as you said, you mentioned art and science, so we always wondering where we are, it's something in between. And oh, I think that philosophy is a base in everything, so that's also why I got in this program. <laughs> Um, I was always wondering and always wanted to have a chance to study. So, yeah, I don't know if I contributed anything. Maybe faction is another, is a term in the glossary. I don't know. Post-future. Yes, yes, 
Yes, I think. It's very good. Very, very important. Okay. I think... I think you... you I agree with, with you. I... Uh, for... for uh, contingency, I am in a Master of Architecture in Paris Malaké. Oh, the perfect. school of Paris Malaké. In the in the master of uh, of uh, uh, digital knowledge nice. and i i am uh, with uh, the reflections of the master etc and i wonder as architects are capable to use all knowledge as generic I never seen uh, in other disciplines as in architecture the capacity of you all eternal types of language to construct uh, mm. a, a project. And this is very interesting. And I think that architect can help us to complete the glossary but for the method. For the method of generic, we, we cannot now, all the generic now, it's new, huh? but, but uh, I think, architect, your, your, your ideas are very, in, very interesting and very important. And if you agree, the glossary with, with your terms. Excuse me, with? With your terms. Ah, okay, 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 thank very, you. Very, very, very good, very good. Thank you. I am very happy. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Anyone else? Can I, can I contribute? <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay, so yeah. uh, I was I was thinking about uh, um, we're we're talking about uh, medical terms. So it came to my mind um, a medical term, the medical term of anamnesia, um, anamnesi, uh, the the term yes. that Plato, Plato uses too. Yes. Uh, Bernard Bernard Stigler uses this term as um uh, to to describe the artificial memory. Yes. 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 And yes. well, I, was, I was thinking yes, that you can add. Very... Yes, we, yeah, please. Yes. So before, yeah, I was thinking that. Um, uh, so basically, before uh, we 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 design a space, so uh, we're already in a space in, uh, which where we can say that we're like tech, techno socially individuated if we use a. Uh, um, uh, Simon Don terms too, and this is like the memory we inherit um, when 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 we in this in this in, the, in, in this sense we're we're trying to uh, to, to design a, a generic yes. space. So yes. I was thinking about, uh, so this is our te technical me memory uh, that this embedded with us can help us yes, yes. create this uh, technical this memory space. and shared memory is an idea yes. of the american philosopher ira monarch okay. in carnegie Mellon. shared memory and with uh, with ira monarch we are now connected shared memory and intimate mate collect, uh, collective intimacy yes. to to create uh, houses for interdisciplinary uh, uh, exchanges well, it is very, very interesting. And if we complete the glossary with this, we can after uh, work with this. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah I just, I just wanted uh, as a as a reader of Stigler, I just wanted you know to put yes, yes. on the on the. I know Stigler. Yes, I, yes. And the importance yes, yes. of uh, the technical memory and uh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, you add this. It's very important. And with all, 
we we can construct a common yeah. to continue to 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 create invention in philosophy, science, and art. Yeah. Very very good idea. Thank you. Bettina. Ah, in popular techniques to predict the future. So Bettina. and palm, palm reading. What is palm reading? Palm. That's the palm in of the your, body. That's that. That's the palm what? of your hand, and you read the lines, and then you know the future. Ah, yes, 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 yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm reading uh, the, the, the quote because it's not going to be recorded otherwise. Yes. Um, Bettina said, I'm interested in popular techniques to predict the future, such as fortune telling and palm reading, how they manifest yes. the body or in spaces. Yes, yes. But it is just, just the future in the present. I have palm and the future is in a poem. So, so that word, the word that would fit in all, that is like the somewhat technical uh, yes. predictabilities. Yes, it, it is very interesting because the future, the time, is understood in the space of the, of the body. The time is translated in spaces, and spaces in time, it's, uh, it's very interesting. Perhaps to understand future, we had to be capable to change of, of world. As a reading uh, poem and to, to have an idea of time, uh, it is a metagenicity very extraordinary. It's a human invention. The difference. It's if if you Bettina, if you can um, uh, some some idea on these popular techniques. It's very very interesting. And we can after. If it is adaptable to philosophy and to art, and to in return, since since it is already uh, uh, eight, and we still have only uh, twenty two minutes to go, I think I'll have to ask for the reading uh, for next uh, time and also who would like to present one of the readings and who would like to respond. Jean Francois, so if yes, you said, if you yes. want a, if you want a different system like uh, two responders or two presenters then Please say so because I'm. Ju I just presented the, the 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 standard modality of our classes. So if you want to change, then that's completely your choice. I I. I think it will. Uh, uh, um. It, 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 um, two texts. Sorry, your your, uh, your internet is 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 pretty uh, uh, fragmentary. Could, could you reiterate it? Or the best is always yeah. to uh, turn turn off the video because then uh, at least the audio comes through. It's it's. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Set up one for like a presentation and one to respond. Correct. So yes, we can do. There are two tests. I'm going to post. Really quick. I, it will be in the uh, um, classroom as well, but I'll just give it to you now. One is uh, a conference. This is the secondary text. It's a conference paper. 
given by M. Francois called Interdisciplinary on Land and Sea, Philosophical Fantasy. That one we would like to have a respondent to. And the second text is called, I'll post it here, hold on. The first inter interdisciplinary on, on land and sea was asked to me for the introduction of a great conference, European conference of new agriculture in Brussels. And it was just an openness, an overture uh, of 10 minutes. But after four hours of discussion of the, on this text, four hours. <laughs> Three pages. <laughs> the main text is the main. The main text here is on contemporary objects, which is the Object, second, voilà. very second good. Text posted. Now, very good. that one is more prone to having a um, to having a presentation. So, the form of a presentation that we would just to provide an interpretation or a summary of the text, and Anne will act as a respondent um, instead of providing the lecture she'll respond to you uh, and so we would need somebody that would be able to present that text to the group as if you were leading the, the, the message and then the secondary text which is the conference paper on land and sea yes they are the ones in the syllabus um, the land and sea is the comments paper and as a response to that I have like personal uh, like creative response or something that comes from your own work something you could say that would be in relation to it not necessarily breaking down the text that's that's the difference between a presentation and a response i think right um so well and so yeah, if we if we have any volunteers for the first one, or we'll discuss the response, the that that response in the classroom. So she, uh, Christy, was asking about the formal uh, word response to the readings. I'll post something on that in the classroom. But for, for now, we're trying to just um, get people to be two people doing this for the next session in the classroom. All right, so the first one is uh, on contemporary objects, the article. If somebody would like to give a presentation on that, just if they feel comfortable talking in the room. Okay, Christy, we'll do our presentation. If you have issues during the week too and you have things and questions, just email us and we can help you prepare for it as well. Um, so Christy will be the one giving our presentation uh, on, on, on contemporary objects and we need uh, somebody that can give a response to the conference. It's the best way to kind of get to clarify your own work if you can be in here and respond. Because we're not here to say that. Uh, okay, can I say it again? Um, so there is this the first link that I posted from the research gate that's on the chat, if you can all see. Uh, that is a conference paper that Anne uh, presented. But it has a lot to do with uh, the future and our ideas of the future. And we ask that you can just do an, uh, a quick response to that paper in the class by exactly like how we did this informal one, right? So where where um, Andrea was, I, I believe it was Andrea, right? You were working with the Stiegler stuff, right? So the Stiegler stuff comes up and we talk about that. That's responding to. To work with something that they're personal on. We also have the palm reading stuff that's been coming up. We're reading this through with how it relates to the palm. Reading. It's 
the response is very informal and very easy. It's just to bring in your own work. So uh, for you, Artemis, it would be the architecture stuff. You know, you already had a lot to say that was quite interesting and in relation. You probably will find a lot when you read this text. So it would be something similar to what you've done already in the class today. Any other? Does somebody want to do that response? When you when write, when we write, when we write, uh, uh, write as you think with your skills. It is, it's very interesting if we have very different texts mm -hmm. and very different lives. No, no fear to be, to be individual or personal, and we after we can create a common. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. I don't have a problem. Very good. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> For the next session, I will develop the idea of invention in philosophy. And we can, after, uh, translate to other, other disciplines. The last question that we were getting admin-wise, I'm posting the, um, the, the readings right now on the classroom for you so you'll be able to get them. The ones that were on the syllabus for um, today, are those the ones that we were sent? It seemed like there was a long list on the syllabus. There was three on the syllabus. Usually we're going to give you like one main reading and two, one or two supplementary ones. Uh -huh. So last time, like what we discussed, so for this session, we were kind of contextualizing it with the introduction of uh, future generic epistemology being the main text. Then there were two, there was a uh, PowerPoint kind of translation on it I did about yeah. the future. I saw, I saw all of those, but in the syllabus it has like um, essay on the introduction of the future of epistemology, and then it has like the philosophy yes. of the future. Right, but those it would be in the materials, yes, yes. Those were the, th there were three, yeah, so the Oh, it's just the way the bullet points are. It looks like there are maybe like six or something. Yeah. The okay. So the less philosophy, the future. That's that's suggested. That is a, bo a book. It's a book by another philosopher. So that's kind of suggested if you can read French. I can't <laughs> really get the book and, and translate it all. Um, but we are coming from. So if you read the, um, if you were reading the red PDF that we sent. Um, yeah. The three topics that she picked out, the opacity, yeah. uh, I'm trying to remember, those come from this book. Okay. So, she's kind of giving one from that book. But just do you see on the syllabus how under texts there's like many bullet points? On the first, for today, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's four. Uh, I see like eight. Where are I we at? Under where it's, it, there's, it says exercise one, and then respond to course text through a line. And then on texts, there is like essay on the introduction of the future of an epistemology. That there's, was the main text. You got that one, right? Yeah. And okay. then like week the future, two. Future, space, and ethics. That was the red. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The Le, Le philosophy uh, in the future, that's the book. And then that was all the information. After that is all the information for the book. Um, down to September 2012. Okay, I see. And it's the fourth is Silence of the Future, which is a conference paper that we have a translation of. Okay, my for some reason my computer downloaded with like 10 bullet points. So I was yeah, it probably made a bullet point for every line. So I apologize. No, it's okay. But that was kind of like what we were contextualizing today. We can, we'll, we'll be going back to those those texts. But the ones that we're assigning now, if you go down to the second day and you look at the texts uh -huh. like two, 
interdisciplinary on land and sea philosophical fantasy and on contemporary objects. Those two are the ones that I'm posting. The, uh, on contemporary objects is the one that you that you were taking on. Uh -huh. And um, convention. Uh, no, you're doing those. You're doing the Yeah, you're doing on contemporary objects, and Michael was going to do the response. So, to the interdisciplinary on the sea. So, if you go to the classroom, you look at right in the announcements, they will see that I'm sharing the two links of those. Those of those two readings. Is that clear? Yes. Sorry. Very good. There's a voice. Um, okay. I, I don't know with you if you're not. Uh, there's. We construct the clip of comfort to that. So I'm going to just do this. I'm going to continue to show you because nobody's responding that they understand. So I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Here is the syllabus, right, in which you oh, go to. Good. Go it's, to this. It's a very, thank you, Artemis. Thank you, Michael. Very, very good. So, fine. Very good. Other question or, or reaction or ideas? For the trip of the fiction. <laughs> Can you hear me? I think I lost. Yes? I think I, I lost something, but anyway. So uh, I have to present and also do a response, or this is okay. Yeah, I, yeah. Now it's now we have three present. Now we have three volunteers. So. <laughs> okay, what I have too many now. <laughs> okay, so um, so we had originally we had Christy present presenting on on contemporary objects. Mm -hmm. Michael was responding to our second text, right? Which was um okay, now we have okay. Okay, okay. fine. Fine, fine, two very responses good. and one one presentation. So, to clarify, we have a presentation from Christy. Christy is going to be presenting on, on contemporary objects, the paper. Uh, Artemis, you'll respond to her presentation. Okay. okay. Um, so, that would just mean having being prepared and mm -hmm. being... And then we had Michael, who was going to respond to our secondary text, um, which was interdisciplinary on land and sea, which are both now on the mainstream in the, um, in the classroom. Okay. <clears throat> Very good. Uh, one practical question. Uh, because I don't know about Google Hangouts. So do we use the same link or we get the new one every time we do the session? Do it every time. Every time it's different. Every time it's a different link. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. And you will post instructions for the 400 word response on the group? Yes, we will. If you're already pre presenting or doing a response, that counts for the response. Okay. So, and we just post them in the Google Drive together. Yeah. Uh, yep. Just on the stream. Just okay. it, they work really well to get people to already begin discussing before we get into the stream. 
yeah, makes yeah. it less of a pain yeah. and less of people being um, scared or nervous to say what they want. But as we go, it gets a lot easier and a lot of used to cutting people off and not being able to do one thing. So Bettina, I'm going to clearly put in the the classroom how to do the response. You'll respond in 400 words to either either text, unless you have already volunteered for a presentation or a response in the in the next session. Then you can do either one. Just a response in general to the content. So you could do both, you can do one or the other. Great. You know the collective intimacy begins. <laughs> between we between a lot of different disciplines. Very good. Um, are there any other questions about the organization of the course? Because um, we have one, I mean, we have a lot more that we prepared for this session. Um, but the one thing that we shouldn't miss is, okay, like, actually, this is what I'm going to present to uh, the group. All of you, to, if, if we can continue, if we can change really quickly what I was saying about the responses because I'm reading I'm going back through our syllabus and I'm remembering that we're forgetting a very important part that Alice was actually contributing to before she couldn't be with us but I'd like to continue um, the exercise in the syllabus okay is in red I post here in the syllabus of this of this week you see exercise one, this is respond to the course text through a line. So identify a concept or an image in one of the course texts and in response to the uh, in, in response to this this lecture, develop your own diagram which explicates and expands the concept within your own field of study. Okay, so if if I could ask this that we could all because this is only to like have one two-dimensional diagram or one line um, that we could come back uh, and you could watch you could watch parts of this lecture or go back to the readings um, and make that as our response aside from the people who volunteered so the people who volunteered are doing a slightly a little, a little extra and now am I confusing everybody? <laughs> is, I mean, is there nobody? You might not have one field of study. I don't have one field of study. Uh, it's field of study. Uh, your interest. What your. What your background comes from or what you're what you're trying to go into what your whatever world you're in at that time coming we wanted to just be personal coming from your knowledge base so for instance i am a computer engineer so if i want to i'm a computer engineer i'm a, a, a lot of other things but if i'm a computer engineer and i want to respond in a diagram to this i might produce a diagram that's about like the about trying to discuss software and the way that that can work involved, right? So, the question of field of study, if you don't know if you have one, then you can just give yourself whatever one you want. Does that make sense?
this may be okay this may be easier i guess then to just discuss any other further questions in the classroom so if i'll post everything that we expect or that we're asking of you we don't expect things we just ask of you to do it as this is a, a, a everybody's coming to do this course because we all want to do it um and then if you have any questions, just post in the classroom or email us. I think we're reaching, the, we are at the end. And I think Patrick was coming on to say something. I apologize, Patrick. Yes. So I'll help. Uh, I'm just, I have to uh, uh, say that the class is already uh, running in overtime. And we should uh, think of uh, closing it uh, in, in, and then uh, doing uh, everything next class. Then willing or uh, giving more time to it better for the starting session. Um, okay, so yeah, so I think. Okay. I think okay. at this point we've reached the point where we'll where we'll break until next week. Mm -hmm. We can be on the classroom throughout the week. Thank you all for being here. Like, uh, uh, on behalf of uh, since I'm presenting right now, on behalf of me and Joe and 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 Francois, we're we're very excited to have all of you here and. Um, we hope to do something very interesting with this work and, and yes. act, create something together. That's like very important for us not to just dictate to you ideas. We want you to be throwing back ideas to us. Like that's what we're trying to encourage. So um, thank you all for being here and we'll see you next week. Thank you. <laughs> so see you all next week. Thank you to you.